Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about the time I went digital. I had bought on iTunes a lot of movies, same thing with Google Play Store, so on and so forth. But when I talk about my original Blu-ray collection, because I've mentioned that in a few videos now, I don't think a lot of people understand what I actually mean. So in this video, it's going to be a bit of a story time, but it's also going to be physical media related. And maybe you can take some things away from this for your own collection. So about 2016, I would say, I had really got into buying movies digitally. So that was through iTunes, Google Play Store. What else was available back then? I mean, um, Ultraviolet was still around at that time, so I could convert a lot of um, movies across to digital codes. So I was moving towards that direction. And I had a Blu-ray and DVD collection. I had, I already had a lot of Blu-rays, a lot of DVDs. I had maybe 250, 300 Blu-rays. And I had maybe, I don't know, a couple of hundred of DVDs. Most of which were Dragon Ball Z and I never ever broke those down. I always kept the covers for those. But in terms of Blu-ray, when I went digital, I was like, oh, cool, I own this on Apple, Apple, uh, what's it called, uh, iTunes now. So I'm not going to ever need this copy again. So I put it in a binder, which when I talk about binders, it's like those CD cases from back in the day. You'd put your CDs in them and you could fit like 52 in it or something or 70 or whatever. You could, I put all my discs in there, threw out the covers, threw out the, what they call the slick, the artwork, threw all that out, didn't need them and went digital and obviously I went that way for many years so as I said 2015 2016 I think 2016 is when I made the call to just break down all the covers and throw them all out and keep the discs but it was one of the most worst mistakes I ever made the reason for which was because as we've seen now with streaming you don't actually own the movies and yes I don't actually own this I don't own the copyright to this but a physical copy is not going to go away off my shelf unless it's something that is out of my hands, like obviously a fire or flooding or disc rod or something. Like the DVDs, the Blu-rays are still here and they're not going anywhere. But I kept running into this issue where um, I would buy something on, say, iTunes. And there was, a, there was an instance, two instances of this where it really was the last straw that broke the camel's back and I went back to Blu-ray. So I had a long time ago purchased Spider-Man 2 and it was in the HD days I had bought the HD version. And so I owned Spider-Man 2 on iTunes. I thought I did. And I, I watched it a couple of times. But then iTunes were doing this weird thing of moving everyone over to the 4K options because they were upgrading a lot of movies to 4K. And I was like, cool, okay. Um, they mentioned, oh, everyone's going to get updated for free. That's fine. And I was like, great, okay, I'll take that. Until I went to watch Spider-Man 2. And I found out that I actually didn't have Spider-Man 2 in my collection anymore. It was, what had happened was um, they upgraded to 4K, but my, my uh, copy was erased, the HD version, but they hadn't replaced it with a 4K option. And I was like, um, so I, I own Spider-Man 2 and that's asking me to buy it again and I already own it and it should be there. And the answer I got from Apple was, um, ah, oh, well, you've watched it a couple of times. We can't give you a refund, but, um, yeah, you like don't own the movie anymore. And I was like, but how can you do that? I've bought the movie. And they never gave me a refund for it, but I think they reinstated my HD copy to my account. So it's weird. I've got Spider-Man 1, which is 4K, Spider-Man 2, which is HD, Spider-Man 3, which is 4K. And it's like, well, cool, they've stuffed up the collection now because one is not hate, what a non-4K option. If you're going to upgrade all of them, upgrade all of them or don't upgrade any of them. Don't put two 4Ks and then a HD in the middle of it. I mean, we have situations like that with uh, the X-Men. We This movie is uh, this one and what's the other one? There's another one, Wolverine Origins as well. I'm not going to get that out because it's jam-packed in there. Oh, no, that would come out. So, you know, we have situ similar situations with the X-Men collection where these two aren't on uh, 4K, but every other X-Men movie is. So it's like there's a big gap in our collections with X-Men. And I felt the same way with iTunes, where I was like, hold on, I've paid for this, and I kind of don't want gaps in my collection. So what? What the hell? What are you doing? So, yeah. 
that was the first instance where I was like, okay, streaming is not all it's cracked up to be. I definitely liked the convenience of it, though. I mean, it was more convenient. It was at my fingertips. I could watch whatever. But in saying that, I kind of missed the browsing experience of, like, pulling a cover off my shelf and saying, yeah, I want to watch this, but I kind of want to be sold on it. I want to pick it off my shelf and then say, okay, do I want to watch this? How do I feel about this movie? Like, do I want to watch it? That's what I love. And I had lost that when I went to digital. And then the other instance was... um. Okay, so at the time, I was renting movies before I bought them. And I was like, you know what? It's a lot cheaper. I can do it that way. And I can watch the movies in within 48 hours or something. And that's fine to me. So I made a call to rent a movie called The Equalizer Part 2, which was a Denzel Washington movie. If you haven't saw The Equalizer, it's definitely worth checking out. But it's, it's a trilogy now. There's three of them. But... I watched this when the sequel came out, The Equalizer 2, and I was like, oh, I'll check that out on iTunes. So I rented it, got everything ready, got my popcorn, got everything, set the set the mood, sort of. And I go to watch The Equalizer, and it says, sorry, this movie is unavailable. And I'm like, oh, I've definitely rented it. I looked at my phone. Okay, the receipt's there. It's saying I've rented it. Went to play it again. Didn't work. And I was like, okay. And then it asked me to pay. And I was like, um, I already paid. And then, and I'll remember this because it's, the last thing that made me go back to back to collecting. And people can say whatever. They can say Jolly Rogers. They can say whatever. But the reason I went back to this was because what had happened was um, the license temporarily was expired for the Equalizer, the new Equalizer movie. Apparently they had couldn't come to terms on some sort of deal, and so the movie was pulled from iTunes temporarily. After I had rented it that night, I was like, okay, I'll watch this tonight. And I was like, what? I, I rented it, but I can't watch it. And iTunes didn't want to give me my money back. And they're like, no, we, uh, you've, you've paid for it, um, but yeah. And I was like, but I haven't watched it. You haven't given me access to the movie. And they're like, oh, yeah, but, you know, uh, when it's, we'll give you access when it's back. And I was like, is it going to come back? And they're like, oh, we don't know. Well, how do you, you can't give me a refund, but you can't guarantee I'm going to be able to watch it. I want to watch it right now. And I fought with them for two days on that whole dilemma. And I was like, no. You're going to do one of two things. You're either going to give me a refund or you're going to give me access to the movie. I don't care which one it is, but one of those two should be adhered to because I had paid for that movie. And yes, I was watching it pretty late in the night because I was watching it close to midnight. So I'm guessing after it ticked over to midnight, that's when they lost the license. But the fact that streaming services can do that, and not only just streaming services like iTunes, Google Play Store, like... They, they also have contracts with these companies too. And licensing can come into play with that. Like, obviously, as um, I believe it's the UK and the US that mentioned 28 Days Later is not on any streaming services. And as I said, I I think I made a mistake in my earlier video when I said it wasn't in Australia, but some people have corrected me there. and So I will admit it. I believe it is in Australia on streaming services. But I believe in the UK and the US it's not. So it's like... You never really know when a when a studio is going to say, no, we're not going to have this movie. Oh, we've lost the license. Oh, we're not going to renew this. Not enough people are watching it. I mean, what didn't they, um, was, what was that one with, um, they erased it. I forget what it was called. Uh, Willow? Willow? It was the Disney movie, but they erased it because not enough people were watching it. And it was like, it's not on physical media, so that movie's gone now, or TV show, it's gone. And it's like, Okay, here's an instance of it. Gone with the Wind. Let's pull that off my shelf if I can. It's jammed in there very tightly. Let's try to get that off if I can. I put these babies really tight on the shelf and I, oh, I can't be bothered. But yeah, Gone with the Wind. I'm going to get this out. Don't worry, I'm going to get this thing out. Okay. Gone with the Wind. Now, be how you may with this movie like... um. Yes, it's by modern standards. This is has depictions of stuff like um, I don't know if I can mention it on YouTube, but it has depictions of a lot of uh, things to do with race, and obviously, it doesn't fit the modern template or corporate identity of Disney, who bought the Fox catalog. So I believe, or oh, this is Warner Brothers. Is this Warner Brothers? Then why was it on Disney Plus? I don't know. But either way, 
this movie has been essentially erased by whoever owned it. I think maybe Warner Brothers. I, th I heard about it getting erased. And I looked it up and I was like, yeah, okay, I can't watch that movie anywhere. So the problem with this is that what happens when a studio says, okay, this no longer fits with us? Oh, no, I'm thinking Disney Song of the South. I'm thinking a Song of the South with Disney. Yeah, this is Warner Brothers. But yeah, this movie was still... Um, oh, you don't want to hear that clunk. This movie... I mean, look, it's not, I'm not the biggest fan of Gone with the Wind. I think it's four hours. It's long. But it's, you know, it's all right. It's, I can watch it. I, I can watch it without thinking, okay, this and that and be offended by everything. I like, I want to watch the movie. I just want to, I want to experience what movie goals experienced for 60 odd years. And then after I finish watching the movie, my mentality is that I will want to watch it and make my own, make my own determinations, if that makes sense. I'll decide if I am happy with it or not, or how I feel afterwards. But that's another thing. What happens when... A studio says, no, we don't want Gone with the Wind out there anymore. And it's not, um, it doesn't fit with our identity and it doesn't fit with the agenda. Well then, if you've paid for that movie on iTunes and they say, okay, we're pulling this movie from all streaming platforms, um, you've paid for it, but you're not allowed to have access to it anymore. I've got access to it. And so this is where I started to feel like, okay, I'm going back to Blu-ray and DVD and collecting because at least with my collection, it's here. I don't need to have 14 different hard drives like everyone keeps saying with the Jolly Roger. And I can actually interact with the movie. So when I say interact, it also supports the original creator as well. So I will say it, it supports the original creators who put effort, who work on these films, who get points from these movies, who want, you know, it, it also pre preserves the film. But, I know that if I want to watch Gunfight at OK Corral, if it's going to come off the shelf, let's try to get it off. If I want to watch Gunfight at OK Corral, 4K, if I want to watch that, it's in my collection ready to go. Like, I don't have to run around and say, oh, who, is it still on my streaming service? Did I buy that back in the day? Or have they upgraded to H 4K and not given me the 4K version? Or can I still access my HD copy? It's like, No. Right now, I can get it right there. Kino Lorber. But like, this is the thing. I don't trust. I don't trust the platforms. I don't trust the streaming options. If I want to watch Breaking Bad, what's to say? Well, I mean, Breaking Bad's iconic. It's never going away. I don't believe unless they, unless something insane happens. But let's say something like Twenty Four, which is in the Fox catalog at the moment. Twenty Four is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Jack Bauer, CTU, like. It's one of my favourite TV shows of all time. Season 5 was the greatest season of that show, by the way. So yeah, Season 5, I absolutely love Season 5 of 24. It was my, or my all-time favourite season of television. It's like so many things happened in that season that were just perfect. But anyways, 24. What happens if Disney come out and say, oh, okay, the, the depictions of this and that in the show are too extreme for our corporate view? Uh, we're going to have to edit this down and we're going to take out the more gritty scenes and you'll still have access to 24, don't get me wrong, you'll still have access to it, but we're going to remove some of this and that just to make it a bit more in line with our corporate identity. You never know what studios are going to do. And that's what I started feeling when I had my purchases taken off me. I was like, well, you're talking about licensing and I'm talking about editing as well. Like editing, they can change the end product of what you're getting that's what they did with 13 reasons why like obviously it was a problematic end scene and i agree with that it was a bit out there but the whole point is that i should still have access to that cut if i want to view that cut just put a disclaimer on it and say hey the scenes in this show are a bit gritty and um we have decided to put this disclaimer um just be aware that there is a depiction of this and that in this show and if you want help put a number there that they can call if they need help or something and yes for the same reasons why is a bit that last scene with Hannah was a bit problematic I'll admit there was a lot of things in that show that was problematic actually <laughs> but yes with um the same reasons why the first season I I have the DVD which contains the original cut and now that has become like this is the reason I buy physical I like that cut and I want that cut and yes it may not I do believe the last episode was very out there, very gritty. But I still want to preserve the original cut. 
And what happens if they say, oh, you know what, not enough people are watching 13 Reasons Why on uh, Netflix. We're going to take that show down because it's had its run now, it's done, get rid of it. Uh, we don't want to pay the creators because we had this big thing in Hollywood with the strike where this is what they were basically debating. Are they going to get paid from streaming and get their royalties? And so you never know what a studio is going to do. And I didn't know what iTunes was going to do. So I think I peaked at about over 800 movies on um, on iTunes. And I ended up... Um, I still have them on my account. Like, Don't get me wrong. They're still there. I can watch them if I want to. But I've, I don't think I've watched my anything from my iTunes collection in probably six or seven years. It's like when I went back to Blu-ray, I went back to Blu-ray. I didn't... I didn't think too much about it. And obviously we have the streamers out there too. We have the Netflix, we have the Stan, we have the the Amazon, we have the all these other Paramount Plus. We have all these other, well Paramount's in a bad place at the moment because of their circumstance. But you know, you have all these other studios out there that have streaming options now and you can get all these movies. And that's another thing. You never know with the license deal if they're going to stay up on that platform. Like we've seen with uh, Warner Brothers. Uh, Warner Brothers, I believe, have the rights now to uh, Mission Impossible. or They've bought the next release to come under Warner Brothers rather than Paramount. So, you know, there are instances like that that are like, okay, well, if I want to watch the new uh, Mission Impossible when it's out on streaming and the old Mission Impossibles, I'm going to have to have Paramount and HBO Max or whatever it comes out on. And it just becomes a pain in the butt to try to track and keep track of. So yeah. Anyways, this was meant to be about when I went digital. End point is that you never know what a studio is going to do. You never know what what's going to change through the years. You never know what they're going to come out with. You never know what they're going to pull from distribution and you're not going to, what you're going to lose access to. Or what they're going to change, what they're going to edit. At least with physical media... I know that if I buy that copy, I know what's on that disc, I know what I'm getting, and at the end of the day, I'm preserving it in the way that I want to watch it. As I've said in an earlier video, I've got Austin Powers, two different versions of Austin Powers. Umbrella bought out in Australia, they bought out the um, US cut of Austin Powers, the, the first one, number one, uh, International Man of Mystery. The Blu-ray in Australia came out with the US cut of that movie, but Australia, for many since the release of the movie, we always had the international cut. And I had to import the UK cut of Austin Powers on Blu-ray to get that version of the movie that I grew up on. With, And in case you don't know what the difference is, there's little subtle changes in scenes. Um, there's also a couple of added scenes in the international cut of like Orange Sherbet, uh, Christian Slater in the movie. Um, you also have the henchman family scenes. So it's like a longer, slightly longer version of Austin Powers, but it's... um. It's the version that I grew up on. It's the version that Australia grew up on. It's the version that Australia viewed. But for some reason, you can't get that version that was shown to Australia within Australia. The same thing can be said for Friday, Ice Cube's movie. When that came out on streaming, you could only really get the um, the US cut. And it shows you the US cut. And yes, there are things in the US cut that are different. But the version I grew up on was the Australian cut of that movie, or the international cut. And so I... I have to go back to DVD to watch the cut of Friday that I'm used to because I've got the I've got the Friday DVD down the bottom, uh, Blu-ray down the bottom here somewhere. I think it's um, Friday. Here we go. I've got this one down the bottom. I've got it on Blu-ray. This is the US cut. I never grew up with this cut of the movie, and that's good. It's good movie either way. It doesn't really matter. But subtle little differences between this and the international slash Australian cut. I prefer the Australian cut because it's what I grew up with and it's the version I'm used to. So this one, this is director's cut. I think I may be a bit off with this, but either way, they should have the um, they should have the original version of that available in Australia. That one, the one that was released in Australia, should be on Australian Blu-ray. And yes, that's director's cut. Maybe maybe I've got my facts wrong on that one. So if I got my facts wrong on Friday, sorry. Um, yes. But this is what I mean. For me, physical media was the logical way to go because it is something that is... I know I can go to and I can watch. I know I can come back to this and I can say, okay, I don't want to track down 10 different Fast and Furious movies across all the streaming services. 
I can pull them out right here and go, okay, I've got all 10 on my shelf. I can just watch them as I need to. And I'm sure they're all owned by uh, Universal. Okay, so Universal, do they even have a streaming service, Universal? I mean, they've got CBS, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, at least on the shelf, I know it's there. I know I can go to it. I don't even think Def Wish is on streaming. The original Def Wish, uh, Charles Bronson, that's on 4K. I've got that from, who did that one? That was Keno Lorber? Yeah, Keno Lorber did that one, and it's Paramount, but I don't think that's anywhere on streaming, uh, at least from the last time I looked, when, and that's why I ended up buying the 4K Blu-ray of it, because I was like, it's one of my favorite movies. Charles Bronson, Def Wish. It's also Jeff Goldblum's, one of Jeff Goldblum's early first roles where um, he's in that movie. Um, so yeah. I've ranted on for 20 minutes. Um, closing, just think about if digital's the way you need to go and digital's for you, just be aware that there are licenses in place and you may not own them forever. Yes, you are buying them, but what happens tomorrow if iTunes say we've lost the license to Mission Impossible? What happens if they say, oh, we, we can no longer sell the Warriors? We can no longer sell... Uh, we can no longer sell the Good, Bad, and the, uh, the Dollars Trilogy. What happens if that ha if iTunes come out and say that and say, hey, we've lost the streaming option to that. Uh, it's exclusive to Paramount or it's exclusive to HBO Max or it's exclusive to Netflix. Like, and you can't sell that. You can only buy it on. You can only watch it on a streaming service. You never truly know what is what what licensing deals are in place and what's going to happen next with these. At least with this, I have some certainty that if I want to watch a movie like I haven't watched it yet, but if I want to watch a movie like Maroon, Gregory Peck. I can pull it off my shelf. I don't have to go searching for it. I don't need to figure out who has the license or who can still sell it or where it is. I'm sure it's on iTunes. I'm sure it is. But um, I don't have to go searching for it. It's just right there on my shelf, ready to go at a second's notice. And I don't have to do the whole mess around of, oh, who has it and is it there? Or, oh, no, they lost the licensing deal. Or I bought that and it's gone now or whatever. I don't have to worry about any of that. At least for my Blu-ray collection. It's behind me. And that's where I'm going to end it. So thanks for watching. Peace out. Like, subscribe, notify, comment. Um, I don't know. Do an up bush dance by Tina Turner. Did that, did, was that big outside of Australia? I feel like that was unique to Australia. We have, this is, do you know Nut Bush City Limits? Uh, Tina Turner song. Um, so we have like a line dance in Australia that we kind of do. And it's like, it's taught in, primary school it's part of the curriculum to learn that dance to the song so i think there was a big one in the desert where everyone did the nut bush together we call it the nut bush um <laughs> yeah um well, if you need to know about australian culture just look up nut bush city limits dance uh australia and you'll get all these results of just people doing it and yeah i don't know have fun with that and yeah if you have time comment like subscribe notify i don't know what else have some fun i don't know peace out catch you in the next one